All right, we're here with uh, welterweight contender Jesse Vargas. Jesse, thanks for joining us for a few minutes here. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. Uh, no problem. I just just wanted to catch up with you a little bit. Uh, your your opponent was just named. Um, you know, I know you were shooting for for one of the big dogs out there. Uh, you know, Juan, Mar Juan Manuel Marquez or or Manny Pacquiao. Instead, you'll be facing an undefeated fighter, much like yourself. Uh, I don't want to pronounce the name wrong, but Wale Omatoso from Australia, 23 and 0. Obviously, heavy handed, 19 knockouts. Uh, what, if anything, do you know about this guy? Um, well, I mean, I pretty much know that he's 23 and 0, 19 KOs. Um, you know, he's undefeated, so he's gonna come to fight. Um, as much as uh, his power, I, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think he has, he has a. Uh, He's much superior than I am in power. I think, you know, when it, when it comes to power, I think we, we're both about the same. You know, I feel that uh, I've been against durable fighters and that I've been able to, to go to distance with me, but, you know, that's the difference between a durable uh, opponent and another fighter that you just, you know, you get him just to get him out of there. But, um, you know, I'm going to come to fight. It's going to be a great matchup come March 16th. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to surprise him. There isn't anything to it. Um, um, he's gonna he he's, he's coming into this fight and, and he, he's gonna be shocked with with, uh, with what I have with what he has in front of him. Right now, uh, you know, uh, people seem to forget that you're just 23 years old. It seems like you've been around forever, um, but you know, you're starting to catch a little bit of and and not from you because obviously you've been calling out you know the the Juan Manuel Marquez and people like that. But but people are starting to to criticize your your opponents a little bit and saying you need to step it up. How do you think Omatoso stacks up? I mean, obviously the record's nice, but but he's still relatively unknown. Most of his fights being in Australia. How do you think he stacks up as far as the uh, you know, some of the opponents you face lately to step up, or is he, you know, uh, uh, kind of a parallel, or, I mean, uh, you know, on, on the same level as some of your recent guys? Uh, you know, he's, he's, I mean, he's at it, he's in his prime. You know, the fighter's in his prime. He's 20, 27 years old. He's undefeated. He has a very good record. He has, he has a, you know, it seems from, from what his record shows, it seems like he has a nice punching power. So I would say he has a... Uh, I mean, to tell you the truth, I'm just looking at him as another fighter, you know, another fighter on my list. But I guess if you see it on paper, he, he, uh, he, he's, I guess, a better opponent than than some of some of the past. But then again, just the reason that he's undefeated is because I mean, I, I've been against expert champions. I've I've fought against undefeated fighters in in in, in the beginning of my career, and you know, any undefeated fighter doesn't want to lose. So it's, it's just, you always have to take that will out of them, and this is not nothing different, really. I mean, I'm not really. I mean, I'm preparing the best way possible for this fight, and for that reason, I'm not really worried. You know, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do what I have to do, right. and come out victorious. I'm coming out 22 and 0 after that fight. Hey, that's what they kind of interesting. You mentioned him being in his prime. How, how is it different? You know, even though they might be at the same levels, you know, but but when you have one on the way up and one on the way down, you have a guy that's undefeated, as opposed to someone that's you know been a world champion or a really good fighter before, but maybe not at their peak anymore, like a Steve Forbes or you know Leonardo Tyner or someone like that. So how does it compare fighting someone up and coming and hungry as opposed to someone that that maybe has seen their best days um, but are still you know tough tough outs? Yeah. Well, I mean, you learn it's. it's it's different. It's a different task with every fighter in front of you. I mean, with a seasoned veteran, you have to watch out for his uh, experience. He has a lot of experience on his side, right? With the with the ex-world champion, and and you learn from it. And I've been with the ex-world champions. I've been with young, hungry fighters. So, I'm, I mean, I've been there, you know. And and this is gonna be like I repeated. Uh, it's nothing different. This guy's just. I'm sure he's he he wants to come to win. He doesn't want to lose, but. Uh, you know, my mentality is very strong, and then he's not going to break it. You know, and uh, and it, if, uh, it doesn't matter how he prepares for his fight because I'm preparing to the best of my ability. You know, I have a great training camp. My trainer, Robert Alcazar, is a great trainer, and we're, we're putting on a great game plan. That's I have two or three different types of styles that we're going to be ready for. And, you know, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm so this, – this is a great opportunity. After this fight, we're gonna, you know, I'm hoping to get a shot at the world title. Right. Now, as I mentioned, uh, you know, you, you had called out and, and thought you were in the mix for for uh, Marquez and and possibly Pacquiao for the next fight. Uh, any disappointment at all? I mean, I know you're 
you're focused on ta task at hand, but any disappointment in not getting uh, getting the call for one of those fights? Not at all. I mean, of course, I would have loved the opportunity, but uh, you know, there's a reason. There's a reason things don't happen. You know, and I just like to believe that there's a reason that this, that that fight with Marcus or Pacquiao didn't happen. Maybe it just wasn't my time. Maybe who knows? Maybe I'll get one, two more fights, and then I get the opportunity. You know, what I mean, I, I leave it in God's hands. I just put in my work, uh, uh, put in the work in the gym, and whenever I get the opportunity, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm I just going to be ready for it. Now I know you're not looking past this guy. You know, you'd be foolish to look by past the guy that's undefeated. But you know, should you come out of this unscathed, is it finally the time that we see Jesse Vargas in there against, you know, an elite top level fighter? Well, I guess um, you know this fight you're going to see a, a great performance on uh, by me by Jesse Vargas. Also, I'm sure Wally, like I, like I repeated, he's going to come and fight, and that's going to make for a great fight. Uh, so first and foremost, I would like for everyone to tune in to this fight, March 16th. You know, it's going to be a great fight. It's going to be fireworks. And, you know, after this fight, you can you can uh, put me in the books, wherever it is that you like, right? Number five, four, three, two, you know what I mean? I can't really say, you know, it's up to the fans to say where, where we're at. Right. So we're basically a month out of the fight. Um, you know, as far as your training camp goes, are you just like, you know, full out right now. What what exactly are you doing in preparation of the fight at this date? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. What are we doing now? Uh, you know, like we're basically a, a month away from the fight. Uh, you know, as far as your training camp goes, you know who you're fighting. You're a month out, so just just explain you know your basic training camp. What you do on a typical day right now? Um, you know, we're working a lot of power. We're working speed. We're working uh, nice strong footwork. Uh, uh, just just a little bit of everything, you know. We're we're maintaining weight at a at a at a good, you know. Not we don't want to we want to control the weight as of now, in which we are. And you know, we just uh, uh the game plan. That's all we're working on. It's just the game plan. You know, we're a month away from it, and uh, you know, we're pretty much in good shape. You know, we're we're ahead of schedule, so that's perfect because we get to take days off when we need when we want to when we need them, and you know. Everything, everything's right on schedule. All right, and then just two real quick off-topic questions, and we'll let you let you get back to work here. Uh, first of all, the, um, just your thoughts. You know, since you used to be there with with uh, you know over at, over at uh, you know Mayweather's, uh, thoughts on on Floyd switching trainers from from Roger, who's apparently uh, having some health issues, and uh, going back to his father, Floyd Senior. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Floyd's a smart man. Uh, you know, there's a reason he did it. I mean, maybe uh, Roger wasn't, I mean, wasn't healthy enough to train him. I, I don't know the case. I hope the best. I hope uh, Roger get, uh, gets well. I hope he gets better. But, uh, you know, he, he, he did it because, most likely he did it because, I mean, he, Roger's possibly sick right now, and, I mean, he needs to bring in his dad. And that's, that's a good idea because, you know, if you don't have your uncle, I mean, next person close to you is, is your father, right? Your father or your uncle. Right. You know? He's a smart man. He's having family on the side, uh, people he can trust. And, uh, you know, um, I wish him the best. I hope he uh, comes out victorious in his next bout. You know, you know, one thing that fans always say is that, you know, Floyd's been around so long and he's so good and, and, you know, he's been around long enough that he basically trains himself. As a fighter, is that, you know, obviously you're on the way up and is still learning, but, but do you agree with that, that someone like Floyd Mayweather can kind of uh, train himself at this point and, and who trains him, he's an official trainer, is kind of uh, irrelevant? Uh, he is, uh, you know, one of the few fighters that can train himself. I mean, that, that is true. He is smart. He studies his his opponent. He knows what punches gonna, what punches are going to work for him, and he just practice, basically practices himself. From what I see, from what I saw in him, and and he he runs it. You know, he he's a smart fighter. He doesn't need anyone telling him. Maybe every now and then someone will need to remind him, like Roger did. You know, certain moves or, but uh, yeah, he's he's an individual that can train himself. Yeah. No, he, does need, he, he does need. Nope. He does need someone to hit the miss with, you know, and he does need that type of work. So he also does. Right. He, he does need a, a uh, trainer as well. Right. 
All right, and this last question, just sw switching back to top rank here. Um, you know, obviously you didn't get the call. You, you have any inside info, or, or if not, who who would you like to see uh, Marquez and, and Pacquiao fight when they when they make the return? Um, who like? Well, you know, you, you have a couple of names out there. Uh, I'd like to see Brandon Rios you know, with Marquez or Pacquiao. Uh, Forty-seven. Who else would be good? I'd like to see Jesse Vargas in there. <laughs> uh, you know, um, who else? Let's see. I mean, you got a couple of names out there. Yeah. All right, Jesse. Well, just, you know, again, just tell the folks where uh, you said, you know, March 16th. Uh, anything else you want to add? Where can the folks catch it? And, and, and as far as following you and that kind of stuff. Uh, this one's coming in March 16th on HBO. Uh, it, the fight is, is going to be at the Home Depot Center as a co-main event to the Bradley main event. So I hope that you can tune in. It's going to be a great fight, you know, and um, thank you for the support. All the, all the fans that, that I have on my side, I want to thank you for the support, and I uh, hope you continue to enjoy my upcoming fights. All right, Jesse, appreciate that, and uh, best of luck to you.